We went into our interview with one of the filmmakers for Secrets of Blackmore, the secret history of Dungeons and Dragons, thinking we would learn about Dave Arneson's contribution to Dungeons and Dragons. We were wrong. The documentary isn't just a history of the origins of D&D. It's the history of the origins of role-playing games. It tells the story of how a group of people created the hobby we enjoy today. In short, all role-playing games owe their existence to the Twin City Gamers. The story of D&D isn't just the story of Gary Gygax, or even Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. It's the story of a group of friends who played off each other to have fun. However, for many, they've been cut out of history, and the goal of Secrets of Blackmore is to correct that. I think the thing that comes through with the movie is that you have this group of people that are all very intelligent. They're all college students. They're very different because they're all centered around these universities. And so most of these guys are, they're working on at least a bachelor's degree. Some of them were working on master's degrees. They're very intelligent young men, really sharp, and they're leveraging all this creative outburst in, in their group to create all these crazy ideas. There's a mechanism in I, in the way ideas work. We we hold ideas collectively as, as mm -hmm. like, species you know like you and i like if you tell me you're talking about this idea so now i have this idea too and we're sharing it but if it's not a good idea then i might just be like well i don't want to remember this idea so we're not going to do that idea anymore you know i'm right. going on to something else but these guys so so that's kind of what these guys are doing it's like they're popping out ideas mm -hmm. the ones that don't work they just ditch mm -hmm. and the ones that do work just end up into their in their play style and their play style isn't written down anywhere at all it's just their house style so you've got all these people that are going to dave arneson's basement that are all sort of learning by word of mouth or by watching mm -hmm. how this played and so it's and it's evolving and it's evolving quickly like the early stages take a long time but then once it really starts to once wesley gets his game it really just ratchets up because you've got Dwayne Jenkins, he comes up with his Western game, and yeah. that's you know, that's that's phenomenal. A Western game, you know, I every I always thought Boot Hill was the first Western game. Well, Dwayne Jenkins did it like in 1970, four or five years before, and then um, Dave Arneson starts doing this crazy Blackmore thing, which they call the the it's the medieval Brownstein, because that's what they call a role playing game is a Brownstein. A lot of people just wouldn't know what to do in that situation. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to, to lead up to is that, you know, you've got these guys that can actually, it's not just the, the referee and the game designer. I mean, the, the game designer is the referee in all mm -hmm. these. It's not just the referee and game designer who's, I got this cool thing and everybody's like, raw. It's like everybody's got to understand they can play in this new style and they're scratching. Right. They start to push each other forward with this new mm -hmm. style. You know, it's fascinating to talk to all those people because they yeah. don't. In, in a way, some of them don't really even realize that they, as players, are really designing the game, too. There's a difference in how Arneson approaches design from Gary Gygax, mm -hmm. I think. It's just that I have a hunch, okay, and, I, and people might jump down my throat for this, but I, I think Gary was much more into the idea of having characters and then adding onto them to give them abilities, so it's like you can't do something unless you have the ability to do the something. Arneson was much more of the attitude that anybody can do anything, but they might not be able to do it very well. There's a difference in design style between Arneson and Gygax, and you can see it in some of the things they do. In Blackmore, like David McGarry is the first thief. He doesn't really have thief skills or anything. There's nothing in the rules that says that, but his character is defined as a thief, and he goes about doing what he thinks a thief should do. He does the first RPG heist in Blackmore, and he steals Dan Nicholson, the merchant player's stash out of the basement of his uh, of the merchant shop. You know, so that's a significant like they're creating these archetypes like that so you know later on you have Greyhawk and you have the Paladin class the way that Greg Benson played the Great Svenny was that was as a noble knight maybe he didn't have the abilities of a Paladin but he was playing his character the way a Paladin should be so it's kind of an archetype so their archetypes are coming about coming out as as their characters rather than as I'm gonna be this character and that means I get this special ability it's just like this is who I am and this is what I do but the other significant thing, you know, there's a lot of Pete Gaylord wanted to be the first wizard, so Dave Arneson just let him be a wizard. And and when they were playing the game, since they didn't, they were just play testing. Right. And there really weren't that many rules. Pete would just say, "I want to cast a spell that does this. We're in a bad spot, and I need a spell that turns the floor into ice so that everybody falls down." And so Arneson would be like, "Okay, well, let me see how good a wizard you are, and we roll some dice and determine whether you succeed at doing that or not." 
Every time you play a wizard character, you should give a little nod to Pete Gaylord. He's the first person to like shoot a fireball at somebody. Mar- Marty Nutzel, he was an elf. I don't know, they did a lot of stuff early on that appears even in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. I was looking at, I don't know if it was Helen Nicholson or, or Dan Nicholson was playing a gnome character. I have a, an early character sheet. This whole idea of like, you know, maybe it wasn't the full-fledged thing, but they kind of created a spark of an idea that would then appear later. And so I think that's just really interesting. People should be happy to know it. Probably the most important person in the whole story is Gail Gaylord. Dave Arneson, when he was doing games, the big complaint was that he wasn't typing up his manuscripts. So he, he asked Gail Gaylord, Pete Gaylord's wife, to type up D&D manuscripts for him. Oh, so wow. when he was working on D&D with Gary Gygax, she was doing all the typing. So all these manuscripts were created and he was sending them to Gary. And then Gary would send him updated manuscripts and he would like handwrite on like scraps of paper sometimes notes and she would type it up into, into D&D. What happened was though, at when he and he and Gary had a big split, he asked Gail if she had any fragments of any of the stuff, right? And she was like, I have everything because I use, I'm a typist and I use carbon paper when I typed everything. Oh, wow. When you come down to the lawsuit thing, it's not any, I mean, I'm not going to talk about any moral issues of who did right or wrong, but uh, Dave Arneson showed up in court with complete manuscripts, multiple, like every version of D&D from step one, and maybe even un, an unpublished manuscript. But mm-hmm. all of that, he gave all of that to his lawyers, and that's what he showed up at, at court with. And so when it came down to it, the judge was like, well, it's clear that you guys are both doing this. You can't separate it out. I mean, AD&D is all Gary, but when it came to D&D, it was both of them. This is my primary issue with the whole split between Dave and Gary. Here, I'm doing this movie, and it's covering the history of 10 years of people devising these crazy ideas to make really neat (laughs) things. And most people don't know about it because the only thing that ever got into the the gamer media, and and then from there into the regular media, was this idea that there was some schism between the creators of Dungeons & Dragons. And so if you get hung up on this whole battle between Dave and Gary, which, (laughs) I mean, we could talk about it. Different people would tell you different things. So it's just not right. it's like it's just not worth going into. But what it really does is it just obliterates the history of D D because people just think they want to think that like Gary Gygax invented everything. You know, Secrets of Blackmore is essentially the story of the Twin Cities gamers and their influence on role and creation of role playing games told by them in their words. I think that they're happy that somebody is just sort of recognizing them. It's not about getting a lot of money or anything. It's just like, yeah, we did this thing, and then it became this really huge thing. And it's not an even and we did it first, it's just we were part of that. And we've been cut out. 